if you're walking around. Do I don't know. You look like you're a fall sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Um, so uh, where, where do we start? You got something you want to start with? Yeah, of course I want to start. Oh, with you want to start? Okay, go. Yeah, uh, we got some guys that got drafted in uh, the draft. Yeah, last week. yeah. four. Yeah, NHL. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, talk about that. Well, I'll talk a little bit about it. I'm not going to be. Well, there's a couple things I want to say about it. Like, so obviously, Andrew Gibson, second round to uh, Detroit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor Smith, fourth round to Anaheim. Uh, Ryan Mack, McPherson, sixth round to Philly. And Warren Clark, seventh round to Tampa. Sixth round, I think. Well, then shoot me. He was a couple of picks after. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. I think he was sixth round. <laughs> yeah. Well, Either I, or. Yeah, it doesn't, he doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't Either care. Or. It was uh it was really neat. Uh the, the why I like this, this is really cool because um each of them have like a little and then Mac's brother, Connor, is at Philadelphia camp with him right now. Yeah. So uh like the funny thing is is like most of them there's only one like Gibby skated with me not till Bantam. So but I know him, he's a great player, good, great skater and stuff. But it was uh, what I like about his story is like what I like about this is he was a fourth round pick in the OHL. And then he went and played in a uh, tier two junior A loop up in Northern Ontario and uh, stepped in the OHL and does, didn't miss a beat. So like, like when you look at the projection of where you're going to be and that you got to be, take the best route and all this different stuff, like the bottom line is you just got to be able to play. And Gibby was that guy. So he had a really good opportunity in the Sioux this year. They had, uh, you know, uh, he got to play right away because they were a little bit light on D, not light on D meaning, uh, they only had three D. What I meant is that they they had to replace a lot because they had a really good play, team last year. Yeah, a lot so, of older guys. Yeah, yeah, so he was he was given not given. He was uh, took the opportunity to use power play and all that kind of stuff. Put up some points. Did great. Then he got injured and he was out for like I think six seven weeks. And then so like the the scouting on him was like oh man this guy's really good. Uh, he just jumped in the league. He's doing well. He can skate and all the positives. And then he's injured. So there's like question marks. So then he he got. Play, I think he finished one or two games at the end of the season, went to the U18s and had a great camp mm-hmm. and went second round. So that's Killer, great. man. Yeah, it's great. To man. the Red Wings. Yeah. What a sick spot. Yeah. So that, like, the story there is, like, it wasn't like he was a first-round pick, this, that, the other thing, and everything was perfect, right? There, there was some adversity. It was, it was, um, it was, uh, it was good. He just took advantage of his opportunities. Yeah, right? it wasn't so handed that, to him, yeah. That was great. So then Connor... Uh, big six foot six D, maybe yeah, he's six foot six. Huge man. He's a, just a huge man uh, that works really, really hard, and, yep. and a super, super nice kid. But you get yep. this kid on the ice, and I, I, this is maybe not. I think he'd be fine if I said this, but he won't. He doesn't mind hurting you. Yeah, he's got a he's very a mean, yeah, a mean, mean, mean streak on him. the ice. On the ice, but yeah. the, the nicest <laughs> kid nicest in the kid freaking ever. world, like <laughs> just happy and yeah. you know. And I was really happy for him because, you know. People look at, like, I, it's just looking at the, when people project NHL players, you know, you're, you're looking for, you know, great skate. Like, I'm not saying he's not a great skater, but you're looking for, like, those intangibles that are, like, some people can't really understand. Like, how could someone that's just, like, a, a stay-at-home D get drafted so high? Or, you know, he does make mistakes on the ice, but it's like, you think of a guy like that. I was talking to one scout about him. What do you think? And I said, well, obviously, he's big and strong and mean, and he's got some some gaps that we all know, right? But the, the the scout said, he goes, yeah, but what do you think if he was drafted, whatever round, and he spent, you know, two more years in the OHL and then two, three years in the American League just honing down those deficiencies because you can't teach his size, you can't teach his meanness and his competitiveness. And I said, 100%. I said, you, 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 that's a great chance to take on a guy. So I was really proud of him because this guy really works hard. And to give him credit, he doesn't do everything with us. He does, you know, like we talked about on a podcast before, he does other things. And uh, he just, he's doing great, man. He's just the happiest guy in the world right yeah, now. Yeah, and super, super coachable kid too. Nice kid, super coachable, listens. Yeah. So like whether he's training with us or he's training at the other gym that he works out at yep. or wherever he is, you, I could bet that he's listening, paying attention, and actually trying to get better. You know? Well, this kid in COVID, yeah. they went down to Nashville. He yeah. knew someone down in Nashville, so they packed up, went to Nashville for a couple months, and he trained. It's good for him. So yep. then there was uh, um, Ryan McPherson that got yeah. drafted. I know. So ha- you're so happy about I'm that. I'm so happy about it. Here's another one, right? Um, here's someone that they were drafted. Him and his brother were both drafted to the Ottawa 67s later rounds. COVID probably played a big role in that. 
then they uh, played a year of junior B. Now, apparently the junior B loop is not the greatest place to play to get drafted or to go to move on and get scholarships. But guess what? They both got scholarships. So Ryan and Connor both got scholarships, full rides to uh, University of New Hampshire. That's coming up in whatever, next year or the year after. But uh, they were drafted out of the junior B loop. Why? Because they put up a ton of points and they did what they th- did really, really well. And um, they come in here and they work hard. They, I've been training with them. They're the same age as Charlie. And they've been, I've been training with them since they're eight years old. They've been coming to this gym religiously. Me too. <laughs> I know. Coming yeah. in this gym religiously. They pay attention. They pay attention to their diets. And they just ignored all the noise. And they just did their own thing as far as the path that they took, which was great. And it just seems to work out for good hockey players that are committed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, so I what do you have to say about the yeah, Max? I know, I'm, I'm not going to go too much more because I could go on a rip about um, about these two guys, but it's, it's for, for Ryan in the, to go in the draft like that. It's just a real testament to him as a person too, because you know, at the, and then same for Connor, but because Ryan was the one that got drafted, it's like they had to watch, you know, Charlie play in the OHL and Seabass play in the OHL and them get their goods early, you know, whereas they had to wait an extra year before they started getting some attention. And, you know, maybe if they hadn't got that attention in their first year of junior B, they start getting a little bit, uh, you know, in a rush to start to make different decisions. But nonetheless, they played junior B hockey, man. They played junior B and they showed up to the gym every day. They're consistent when, when, when they needed to be consistent. They listen, they try to, and, and particularly Ryan, again, because he's, he's got drafted, like really, really intelligent kid in terms of his training too. Like he tries to ask questions and tries to get better and he pays attention and you feel like you're, you feel like you're having an impact on him because he's actually listening and responding to you. Those qualities we always talk about, you know, he's looking at you. He's, you, you ask him something and he gives you a real answer. It's not two words. It's like he actually explains what he thinks. So I'm so, couldn't be more happy for that kid, man. Cause he's, uh, he sent me a text. He's at camp right now, Philly. And he said that, uh, Patrick Sharp was there and gave him a couple, uh, nice compliments and, and all that. So I'm just, I'm super happy for, for both those kids, but Ryan, for sure. It's, it's, it's awesome to, to see and be a part of like, that, this is really my first real taste of a kid that I've had an impact on having that, you know, if you don't at the NHL level, obviously, but, um, for you, I know you've had that with countless players, but for me, it's my first one. So it feels, feels cool. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's incredible. So NHL, man. Yeah. Un- insane. It's incredible. And then, and then our last, lastly for our group of guys here locally is uh Warren Clark. And this is like, he had no idea that this was coming. And here's another one that didn't get drafted in the OHL. Right. So six foot three defenseman that works real hard. That's in good shape. And happy kid and just goes out there and plays he's got a little bit of nastiness to him so he moved out west to alberta and played in manitoba uh, yeah played manitoba sorry steinbach manitoba and then he got uh a full ride to st cloud state and it was supposed to be for the following year but they want him here now and then he got drafted had some interviews and like just great to see but another guy they just work hard and they're committed man it's awesome so but my point is on this is it, it when we talk about just continue to play and play because you love it and play with passion and all that stuff and keep training because you never know where it goes. If you do the right things, then if you're good enough, they're going to find you. Yeah. Bottom line. My, my point, using your words as my point, is so take all four of these guys. They played AAA in Windsor, Sun County, so not Toronto, not the Michigan Loop, not none of that. They played Windsor, Sun County. And then all four of them had a very different trajectory. And that's what I want to highlight from what you're saying is you have, you know, Gibby did the high, higher draft pick in the OHL, played one year of junior to like most kids that get drafted would. And then OHL straight shot to the NHL draft at 18. Seven, is he even 18? 18 now? Yeah, yeah, yeah 18. 18. Yep. And then uh, Smitty, he, he was a later pick. Yeah, late birthday too. Late birthday, played because it would have been last year was his draft year, or was this year his first draft year? This because he's a late birthday. This year was for his draft year. Yeah, so he, yeah. he's lumped in with the old fives because he's born in November, right. December. Right, and not not a skill, Kale McCarr type defenseman, totally different type of role. Embraced a role and did it, and then gets drafted later on. Then you got the Ryan McPherson, which is like a really strange path of drafted, doesn't go, plays junior B, Division One out of junior B. And then NHL draft out of junior B. That's a really unique situation. And then Clarky, same thing, like undrafted, plays a year of junior B, then plays a year of junior A, 
and then gets a scholarship and then gets drafted. So there's like, it's what we talk about all the time about there's no recipe. It's just a great example with the four guys we have locally that all did a very different or, or considerably different path. You know what I mean? And it's so it's just interesting to see as just a nice example of, for people to pay attention to. If just in our area alone, locally, we got four guys, all four of them very different, very different setup, you know? So that's good. Good opener. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's awesome, man. It's just, it's, it's so nice for, um, like you said, it's the first taste that you've had of seeing someone come through the whole thing and then you have your hands on them and, and actually have a lot of influence on some of their decisions and their training and, uh, stuff that it feels really good when you have a hand in it. And, uh, I, I'm always so happy for any of the kids that get it for sure. I'm just more used to it. Yeah. You know what right, I mean? Right. Right. And, uh, but it's like the biggest thrill in the whole world and it's awesome, but it feels good when you have even just a small piece. Yeah. Definitely, you know? man. And that's the other thing is like for coaches and parents out there, it's like, it's easy to be discouraged. It really is. Like if you're not the top dog and you're not getting all the love, like, you know, we talk about it with, uh, with my kid and, and, and the kids we talk that are here, but my kid personally, cause I talk to him every day is like, it's so easy to look at all the hype stories. And then, but the th- problem is, is when the hype doesn't, the expectations don't leave up to live up to the hype. It's like, that's a big, big fall from grace. So it's like, I'm really, I'm a big fan of going through things quietly and just doing your job and, um, and, and just put the work boots on nose to the grindstone and just do the work. And again, it's not thinking, what what am I going to get out of this tomorrow or this year? It's got you got to think of it long term and just work for that period of time. Yeah, I and mean, I look That's at really even good. even for uh, you know probably Gibby is probably the most well known of the four, but Connor too because they went to the Memorial Cup this year. But then you got Ryan and Warren. Like there's probably thousands of people listening to this right now that don't even know them. They don't even know who they are, right? But they're drafted to the NHL, you know, and. That's just to your point, just like that quiet, go about your thing, do your thing. And at the end of the day, you're going to end up in the same place. So you just keep chugging away and do what works for you and keep, keep working and just keep, keep going at it, man. And it's a, it's a good testament to that, man. So good for them. I'm really happy for all four of those guys. Hey guys, my name is David. For the last roughly year or so, I've been a member of the PowerTech podcast and I've trusted Eric and Andy to help me as a hockey dad raising my kids and trying to figure out the answers. I don't have all the answers and it's a great source of information and it's an area where I feel comfortable leaning on to help me make better decisions. With that said, one thing I do know about is supplements. I find it's hard to navigate the whole supplement world and make sure that you're using products that work, that are effective, and again, are science research based. Blue Star products, incredible brand. The products are based on research, science, the products work, trademark patent ingredients, and you can find all of the research just by scanning QR codes that are right on the back of the product. Thank you to Eric and Andy for their podcast. I think it's amazing and definitely give Blue Star Products a try. So that was the first thing. The second thing I wanted to just say that which leads into my, our podcast today. So what our podcast today is about, and we've been, I've been tiptoeing around this for a long time because it actually is, could probably create some controversy, but that's not what the point of it is. It's just questions that I have. So like to back up a little bit is like, I don't really do a lot of things without it making sense to me. I ask why about a lot of things, about everything. So that's what this is about. And it's about power skating or skating instructors. And you could use skill instructors, but I'm sticking to power skating. So ironically enough, the last couple of weeks, I had uh, an NHL scout ask to tell this kid from out of town, that he should maybe start skating with me. He goes, Andy, could you, do you think you could help him? And I said, well, time is one thing. Um, and, and I said, I could look and I could kind of make an assessment and maybe take it from there. Okay, so that's the story. So this person called and he had a whole bunch of things. And finally, two weeks ago, he we, we were able to book a session and great kid, okay? A lot, a lot of deficiencies in his skating. And, uh, and then he had, and then he said, can I, can I bring a couple other kids? So after the first day, like, this is going to sound like I'm, I'm humble bragging or just straight bragging, but that's not what the point is. After the session, it was very thankful. And it was my, my son was out with me and he goes, dad, he got, he was getting it. Eh? I said, yeah, he was. And after that, his dad sent me a text and he said, uh, thank you so much. It was the best. He, we got home, we were in the car. He said, that was the best money we've ever spent in hockey. And 
and I'm, I'm like, awesome. But why? Because I didn't do anything dramatic. Okay, so I did. It was more of an assessment and and and, and addressing those needs, starting from the basic. Okay, so to me, the basics of power skating is edge work. What are edges? That's number one. Um, meaning, and and for me, that's holding a balance and being able to push off and having good posture while doing that. It's an inside edge skate. No big deal. Next thing is like stride length, your upper body posture, stuff like that. And then I will look at some crossover stuff, your cross unders and generating power from that. And then some type of turning to see if you can do those. Those are basic to me. And basically I don't really know what else you can really work on unless you get real specific to assess someone. You can see their quickness and all that stuff. So anyways, to say that was the best money that we spent money on. Best money spent in hockey? In hockey. Yeah. It's like, why? Okay, I can t- I can say one reason is because when when he came to me, I spent time talking to him, let him know like what we're going to do, and I spent time like, the investment of saying we'll, we'll find we'll, what we're going to do, yeah, we'll communicating, find, yeah, <laughs> find find deficiencies or yeah. tell you how great you are or find deficiencies and work on them. And number two, we actually took the time to say, okay, here you're like for example on the edging drill or inside edge drill i was explaining to him that he doesn't have proper balance because his feet are a little bit outside of his hip and it's impossible to generate like we'll have a good balance and generate as much power as you possibly can oh so we started working on that and the second thing was like now your posture you got to get that up to see how you're off balance and I, I went through the process and he was like oh and he f- and he went to fix it right away and he was making improvements so that was very encouraging so we did that with all different things so he got feedback on what he was doing well, and then he made improvement, and he he could feel it. And I would ask the question. So I think part of it it wasn't so much that the lesson was so great, as far as the technical stuff. I pointed out simple deficiencies. I think it was important to him, or what was what was impressive to him, or what he he must have felt like actually cared about his results. That's what I think, and I'm probably going to ask that when I see him next week. So I'm like amazing because he, he, I asked who he has been skate has skated with and he put some names out there and one person is uh, like, like supposed to be pretty good. Actually, someone recommended him to me and I'm like, eh. but not because I knew anything. I was just like, I, I have my doubts on a lot of this stuff. So, th- so this guy didn't affect, like if he went with a couple different people, and you're skating with all these different people and you haven't noticed the absolute basics, there's something seriously wrong. Mm-hmm. Do you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So like, that's where I like, if you just take this to the whole skill level thing or skill development thing, it's like, what are you actually ending up paying for? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll set the, set the table a little bit more too, because we've been having a couple conversations here over the last couple of weeks about this topic. Cause one of our guys right now, he's doing his master's in more or less power skating. He's actually doing skating mechanics as his master's uh, of kinesiology. So we've been, and he loves talking about this stuff. So we've been, we've had like several talks about power skating and kind of every angle on when it's good, when it's not, who it works for, who it doesn't, when certain things are appropriate, because you hear a lot of, you hear a lot of buzzwords, buzz terms. And I know there's a lot of coaches that capitalize on using those and, and, it's easy to get sucked into the sales pitch when you constantly hear the buzzwords that people use. And then you see this coach that's also using the buzz buzzwords that people use. It's like, okay, so maybe let's go skate with them because that sounds good, you know, but people have to be able to recognize that there's, there's a difference between a good salesman and a good skills coach or a good salesman and a good skating instructor. And so for the, for the topic today, talking about the skating mechanics things, it's, it's hard it's hard to know the answer like nobody knows the answers to a lot of the questions that we're going to talk about but it's just a very difficult topic to cover because there's so many different ways to improve things when it comes to skating that aren't just skating and the younger you are the more true that is you know so I'll say that part again the, so there's there's a lot of ways to fix Skating. Parts of skating, yeah. skating mechanics. There's a lot of ways to do that. And a lot of them aren't actually on the ice skating. Yes. Yes. And the younger that you are, particularly around like the puberty age, 
when you're younger, it's tougher, but that, let's say that puberty age up until maybe you're 20, yeah. a lot of those things that are off the ice that can help you, like that statement is more true the younger you are. So if, if you can fix things off the ice, it's more true the younger you are. Because the reason for that is you need to f- address so many things that may have nothing to do with your actual skating on the ice just because of the fact that you're growing and getting bigger and you, maybe you need to get stronger. Maybe you need to get more mobile. Maybe you need to get a whole bunch of other things that aren't actually your skating stride. But by getting those things, it will address and sort out your skating stride or your quickness or your edge work or your balance or your posture, or whatever thing you want to talk about when we're talking about the actual mechanics of skating. And so I think that's where this conversation is going to be useful because it's not we're not poo-pooing the <laughs> poo-pooing the uh, the power skating stuff. It's we're putting in context of like trying to figure out where it's appropriate for you, you know, and when it's useful and when it's not. Because yeah. like you teach skating, so we're not saying don't go learn skating no, stuff, right? I, I I like this is the thing because there's, there's some people take contact like contact they take things out of context so easily, mm-hmm. or they see a clip again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had a last week we had a clip that's about five thousand different comments. It's like I know. it's not what the clip was, but I know. But I know. anyways, yeah. So this this is this is I I had a trying to put this into in, into a, a coherent thought. coherent yeah. thought it was yeah. somewhat difficult but yeah. I, I think i got it not bad yeah we'll, so, we'll, we'll see where it goes yeah so what so why the heck would i question power skating so i'm going to make this clear real fast i i absolutely think kids need to work on their skating there's no question about it because like skating is one of the top four and you arguably top skill that you need to have to be a player arguably okay so but here's a question that i've always had and I don't know if a lot of people ask this question. Why is it that you can take whatever group of kids you have and some kid comes on the ice and he's just a good skater and he goes to do a turn and he can turn. Like maybe it takes a year or two, but you could just see like the, the base is good. The posture is good. The stride is good. The agility is good. The quickness is good. Why? Didn't work on anything. And then why do you take... It's other kids in that same group and any group that you look at and they go to power skating and they go to power skating and they go to power skating and they go to figure skating and they go to all these things and they never or they don't turn out to be a good skater at all that's a question so that's a question of is it is it uh gen- genetic or is it trainable right so the good question i don't know the answer but to me it seems to me like you can skate or you can't, and then you can work real hard to become better. But some guys just have the gift that they can skate. I've seen that a million times. So an example with that, I just look at my wall of fame here, and I'll go the first guy, Dalton Prout, always a good skater. Always a good skater. I'm not saying he was always the fastest, yeah, but he was always a good nice, skater. And he was skater. fast enough to play yeah. in the NHL yeah. as a defenseman, but he was a good skater. Okay, then I go down the road a little bit. Right beside him is Aaron Eckblad. Aaron Eckblad was never a really good skater, but he can play in the NHL. Aaron Eckblad does. Both of them have had skating coaches, and both of them have not changed the style that they skate whatsoever. And that, is that true? Yeah, for sure. I've 100%. seen it. Yeah, I think the the it's like any other skill to me. Where if you take uh, let's take strength as a skill, um, some kids are just strong. You get, and maybe you get like some, you know, six foot three teenager and they're just strong, man. Then you get the six foot three gangly kid and he can't push the barbell up once, you know? So the kid that, um, trains his strength, if they both do the same training program, the kid that's just naturally has that strength to a, to a degree will always have a bit of a leg up in the strength department just because they have that ability. They had a, uh, they they didn't necessarily earn the ability to do that. They just naturally picked up that particular attribute better than other kids, and and skating would be no different, right? You get that with a lot of things. We got we got we got one kid in here that's a really really nice runner, and he does he's never done track. He doesn't do track. He never had a track coach, but he just moves fluidly. He just looks. He's like a gazelle man. He's prancing around when we're doing any bounding things, any running. And then you got other guys that 
they're very clunky and they just don't have that. They're both tight, whatever. Yeah, tight, whatever. They're, they're both have done the same development path, more or less. It's like they played the same secondary sport. They played hockey all together growing up. They had the same coaching. They had the same skills coaching. They've had the same levels of opportunity, more or less. And just this guy's got it. And these guys don't have it to that degree. So I think it's just like, it would be, I think it would be foolish to think it's unlike those things where it's like all of a sudden I can just make you from a really clunky, horrendous skater to look like Sidney Crosby on the ice. It's like, that's just, I don't know that if that is possible. Right. You know? So that was my thing is yeah. like, so, so just that next note I had was that, so I see players skate. Sometimes I see them from a really young age and I see people do the evolution of taking lessons and all that stuff. And I don't see a lot of changes in the, in the, as a whole. Okay. So like a tall, lanky guys, or I'm not saying tall, lanky guys, guys that stand straight up or whatever. Sometimes they just always look like they're standing up. Like if we're all doing power skating or if, if you're like, let's say we're all going to figure skaters for coaches. We sh- should we not all look like that? Right. But I mean, I, I understand different bodies and stuff, but like there should be some similarities or some changes that you see like over, over a period of time anyway. So I, I watch kids like, so we'll just take Ryan McPherson, for example, I've seen him skate since he's seven. He's 20 or no, he's 18 years old right now. And he skates the same way. And I'm not saying that's bad. That's the way he's always skated. So I don't know how many changes someone could make. The other thing I, I would like to, this is something I always ask players. Okay, let me just go back to edges for a second. I can't tell you, like, because I have conversations with players and, and some some guys are thinkers, some guys are negative, some guys are uh, just accept, oh, I got to go power skate. They don't ask questions. But if you ask a player, or no, let's go to edges, sorry. I remember talking to one of my best friends that played played a lot of your pros. And he goes, what's, what's edges, Andy? I go, edges? I go, it's a, it's a big word. He goes, is it turning? I go, well, it, it, I, I don't know. I said, edges, yeah, you got like a, you got a inside edge, outside edge. And I, I mean, I don't know, like, and I, and this is where figure skaters and stuff like that would probably explain it, but I just never get the information when I ask. It's like, it's, it's a big term, like edges, inside edge, outside edge. Like for me to be a good skater, which, not so good anymore. But but having said that, as a 54-year-old man, like my son said the other day, Dad, you look great. I don't feel great. Maybe that's the thing. But I never took skating lessons. I know my edges, like or whatever it is. Like I can skate, turn, get out of the gate quick. So I don't know. Well, so, uh, let me. I want to punch the yeah. edges thing for a sec too, because like obviously we know what edges are. Like edges, you have the inside edge and the outside edge. We know what that means, right? But in terms of training edges or like working your edge work, like, is that the, are you doing the slaloms down the ice? Are you doing, are you doing the jump and land? Are you doing a turn? Like what is edge work? It's like the hockey figure skating stuff. Does that mean like you just, you just want to be comfortable on all points of the blade on the inside and on the outside? Like what, what is the definition of working edges? Because some people I've seen this, like guys will go to their skating coach. Like, yeah, we're going to do edge work. And it's like you're doing a jumping 360 ballet move to feel all elements of both edges. And it's like, okay, I understand I understand what you're doing. I don't understand if that, that is useful. I don't understand if that is useful for this particular person. I don't understand when that would be useful for certain people versus not. Is it a waste of time? Is it not? Like there's a lot of questions that come with that when you use it as a statement. So when you say like, what are edges? Like, what does that mean? It's, it's an, it's another one of those non-specific things. It's like, do you just, are you just, we're just going down the ice, weaving back and forth. So you feel it. Is that different than doing the jumping, landing, bounding version that you see some skating coaches doing? Like, what are the pros and cons of each? And when is that applicable? And people don't ask these questions. Is and it that's a 10 the, and twos? Yeah, like, exactly. like that, that, that Mohawk, is edges like, and it's all good. Like, it's all good to be able to do it. It's just like, for me, it's like, that's my question is like, how much time, money, energy is put into that? And I'm not saying, I'm not saying it at negative. I really not. For me, not for me. But everything you know? is edges. That's the thing. Yeah. A hundred percent. But it's, it's, I'm just saying working that edge over yeah. and over and over. Does it make, does it make the s- smaller muscles stronger to and, and more mobile maybe it does I, I don't really know but it's like those are just questions i'm not saying i don't want i'm not sitting here say right wrong because for some people like skinner that played in the nhl what's i forget his first name uh 
Jeff Skinner, he grew up figure skating. He's a great skater. Is that because he was figure skaters? Because he was a good, a skater, good skater that did figure skating right. to help him play hockey. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, cool. yeah. because so I get some really good. I, I like again, I get really good points out of everybody that does it. As per, there, there could be some really good stuff. Well, and, and uh, just to get, answer the question too, to play both sides, it's like you because you can get kids that did the skating stuff from when they were little kids, and then the same kid that did stuff when he was a little kid is a horrible skater. But then people are like, oh, he did figure skating. Like, let's do that because he did figure skating. Well, what about the other kids that did it and weren't any good? Jovanovski had to start at 14. Yeah, and on the flip side, then I get some guys, because I, I, I ask them, like, what is the benefit of, you know, you go to a practice where you have no stick, no puck, and you're just on your skates. And it's like, well, I just feel, it makes me feel more comfortable because all I have to do is focus on being on my blades. It's like, that can make sense. Yeah, it's, it's got to make that, sense to you. Yeah, 100% that can make sense. But it's always what is the what is the purpose? That's the that's always the question that we end up coming back to with all this kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. So in your mind, you have to you got to believe it. But here's the next question that I ask many many players all the time. Um. What did you do? Like, what did you do in your session? At like, the I'm session, curious. Yeah. I don't know. Most most of the time, I don't know. Like edge work. What do you mean? Like what what kind of edge work? Uh, like, and they give you like one example or two, but they don't even remember. It's like, I don't really know. Okay. That's one question. How does it, do you feel better on the ice right now? I, I don't know. Like, can't yeah. really tell. That's, right. I get that a lot. I'm not, I'm not trying to make a, I know, I hear make it. a point here. Yeah. I get that a lot. It's like, okay, so that's, that's my question. So it's like, I think it's ingrained. You got to go to power skating, right? Well, and, so, so would that be, would that be a failure of, cause that could be a lot of different things though, right? That could be. The kid isn't paying attention. That oh. could be the instructor is no good. That's exactly what I got next. Okay, go. Yeah, no, Sorry. no, that's, I'm just agreeing with you. Yeah, that's, yeah. Maybe it's not explained to you properly. Yeah. Like a lot of times if you just say, okay, we're going to go, we're going to make these inside edge C cuts and the outside edge C cuts and just go do it. And the kids, a lot of kids just go, okay, I'll go do it without saying, okay, here's why, here, how, here's how it's going to affect your game. Here's the coaching cues that you need to pay attention to. And so that you can do this, then it might click a little bit more. So I agree a thousand percent. That's exactly what I wrote next. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, that could be a function of that as well. Um, so for me, this is my honest opinion from, ex from experience, not saying it's right. This is my, my thoughts on this. I think it might sound a little weird, but I'm not sure if, Power skating, skating coaches is the big difference maker in your skating. Is that a weird statement? Well, if you think about that, okay, you need to be a better skater. Well, then you should skate. And I agree. But I don't know if the skating lessons themselves are the big difference maker. I think there's a whole bunch of different ways that, and we're going to go through them, that you can benefit, that your body will move better properly and train and be trained better that will you'll step on the ice and you will move differently that's that's my opinion and i again i'm not i having said that i still if it like well i've got my own kid and i train a bunch of guys it's like yes you're going to do that stuff and we're going to touch it on the ice because it's important and again now i'd be a complete idiot changer la chanel if I say don't go do any right. skating or skills. Oh, I'm going to add a little, like a couple layers to this too, because we, I was talking with Aris about it the other day. Yeah. Sorry, our, guys, Aris is another guy that works with us. He's the guy doing his master's. Um, we were talking about it today, actually. And I was saying to him, it doesn't, where, where it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, so if I'm kind of talking about when is it appropriate, where it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to pay a lot of money consistently for just skating for me personally again like you said i'm not saying this is right it's just what i think it doesn't make sense to do that when the kids are still in their like growth years okay now saying it doesn't make sense to do that doesn't mean you never go work on your skating that's not what i'm saying i'm saying only focusing on skating stuff because we have guys where they don't work out or they don't do these other things we're talking about and they just go and do skating things, right? Like I had a kid, he works out here this summer, but last summer, all he did with us was the treadmill. And it's like, that's just working on your skating, which is fine. But a lot of benefit that you could get as a player would come from these other things that you haven't really been doing, that you should be doing, you know? So I'm, I'm 
layering it's that that is the context of what i'm saying i'm not saying you don't ever work on skating i'm saying if you only focus on doing power skating because you think you need to fix your skating to me that doesn't make sense if your body is still growing if you're still developing and you're not in your man body yet right so let's say it's 25 when everything you're basically in your your frame like that's it there's not you're going to be around the same weight for the rest of your athletic life you're you're not growing anymore your body is basically your body it makes more sense then to me, to have a very dedicated, specific, like power skating thing, right? Which is not the same as a generic, just random power skating things either, right? Yeah. Well, I think more importantly, and I've got it in there later, but as you say that, more importantly, it's, you can be more specific because when you're young, obviously doing all kinds of skating drills and you have pucks and stuff, you're, you're, it's like, you're learning, your body's learning how to do it and it become comfortable doing it. You can say there could be some bad habits, good, but the bottom line is you're getting it done. As you get older, now I'm a defenseman and I want to get to the junior college pro ranks or I'm there and I, 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 there's deficiencies in your skating and most people have some, what are the deficiencies? So now you're a t- 18 year old defenseman and it's not so much that you can't generate power. It's not so much that you're not quick, but it could be you just, you're, 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 uh, you, you take crossovers to get to, to make a turn. Whereas you should be able to open up your hips to make a pivot to cut off an angle. And that's a specific thing. That's okay. That makes more sense. And, and, um, and so that's what I mean. So you can be more specific. Is it quickness? Is it speed? Is it crossovers? Is it lateral movements, east west stuff? Right. And and just I want to give a example just to clarify kind of what I'm talking about. I mentioned that I know I mentioned these kinds of things before, but if you're a teenager and you have some very a uh, uh, a really big deficiency in your skating, if you're 15 or 16, like maybe maybe you grew because of puberty and you now have to have a mental reset to get used to that frame. Maybe you're not used to this extra weight that you've gained because of puberty and you need to reestablish some strength to be able to handle that. Maybe you really lack certain uh, mobility in certain aspects and that improvement would transfer onto the ice, you know? So there's things like maybe you can't fully extend your stride because your hips are so tight. Maybe there's so many things in those growth years that you might need to fix that you could easily overlook because you think, well, look at his skating. His skating is off. It's like, yes, it is off, but the better bang for your buck would be these other things right now. As you get older, because if you listen to any trainer that's worth their salt, they're basically going to say specificity is the name of the game. Like you need to train in your environment to get the best results. And that's true only after you're basically in in the zone that you're going to be more or less for the rest of your life. So if you're a professional athlete, it's like there's no more growth happening in terms of your body structure or in terms of weight or in terms of whatever, like you're probably going to be plus or minus the same for a long time, you know? So now we can get hyper, hyper specific because you have the foundation, you have the baseline of everything, you know, but if you don't have a baseline of mobility, it's going to be really hard to be a good skater mechanically. You know, if you don't have a baseline of strength, you're not going to be able to produce a lot of force. So maybe you're not going to be very powerful. Maybe you won't be very quick because you haven't developed the fast twitch yet, you know? So there's these other things in those critical development years from let's to put a number on it, 15 to 20 or 14 to 20 years old, where if all you do is skating and lessons and whatever, you could be leaving a lot, a lot of progress on the table. And and maybe you might, you might even be worse off spending your time and money on that than spending your time and money on another thing. Right. And that's kind of the point. Once you're past that, then it makes more sense to me. It's like, oh, you need to be a good skater. Like John Tavares, when he was in the NHL, uh, he was 21 or whatever, came back and got a skating coach. Or RC was giving me the example of, uh, I think it was Couturier, he was saying, that they were saying he was an awful skater. And he came back and had a dedicated skating coach for a full summer and really, really improved. It's like, yeah, that makes sense because this guy's now in his man body. And now I can really hone in and say, fix this, fix this, fix this, because he's strong. He's mobile. He's done all the things, you know, and now we got stuff to work with to get super, super specific. You know what yep. I mean? No, hundred percent. So yeah. So do you need powers? Do you need to work on your skating? Yes, 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 yes. You have to do it. But I think 
when I said that I don't know if the big difference maker is skating itself, because like, I'll back up a little bit, is we've going back to what you were just saying, is skating the way to fix skating. It's like, okay, let's go back to a podcast we did early on when we started doing our podcast. It was with Chad Drummond with the Edmonton Oilers. He's the um, sports, science, science. sports scientist yeah. guy uh, with them. And he was explained in this very, very good way to explain it. As a hockey player, what you do throughout the season is because you get in a squat, a hip hinge, whatever you want to call it, and you're hunched over a little bit, your body goes like a fishing pole that has, uh, you know, when a you're pulling a fish it. and yeah. it's pulling, it's like you're hunched over. And if you tr- continue to train in that environment, you're not training anything new. So you're going to maybe try to go faster in that environment. Maybe you're trying to get a longer stride, but your your body's not in the right position for that. So your goal to, to make yourself more efficient is to do things that are going to take that fishing pole and straighten it out so your shoulders are back, your hips are opened up, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So skating to skating for your training, number one, is not where you want to spend most of the time, with, within reason, right? So what you want to take, keep in mind when you're doing this is that you, that's number one after a season, is to get back into a good posture. Right. To, to, to let your body open up and, and heal. Yeah, that's a really good point. Uh, just yeah. to sharpen that up a little bit. Yeah. He was... Exactly that example. Your body's like the fishing rod. You're bent right over. If you don't undo that, let's say like overuse movement patterns and whatever, there's things that you disproportionately have been using through the season, meaning that other things have not been getting the proper attention. So if you have a poor movement pattern because you've been doing that the whole season and you don't spend time to undo that, you're digging yourself into a deeper hole of a bad movement pattern, you know, and this is where bad habits start to happen. If you don't spend the time to undo that, that's number one. Number two, if you don't reestablish some strength in those areas that you are missing, especially in a sport like hockey, like strength is coming from everywhere in hockey. It's not just the s- certain muscles in your legs or certain muscles in your chest. or cer- It's everything. Everything needs to be firing as much as possible. So if you don't give dedicated time to some of those weaker areas, then when you go to improve your strength later, those other areas are going to be lagging behind. Those are going to hold you back. So when you are working on your skating now specifically, you didn't establish that strength that you need in those other areas to contribute to that skating speed. You know, so that was a really good way for that he framed it up for us when we when we were talking about it. It's like, those tendons that you're you're, you're they're like steel cables after a while. Try stretching those. Yeah, yeah, that's right? what I was like. Mm-hmm. like so it, it takes older. work to yeah. do those other, and those are the other things we're talking yeah. about, right? Especially when you're yeah. when you're. Well, not even when you're younger, pro, pro junior, oh, for younger. Sure. It's like for you sure. need to give time in other areas. It's not just the one thing. Yeah. So, so the big difference makers to me, okay. So I would say this one would be was when you're, when you are hitting puberty, a big difference in your skating will be just by working out. Oh yeah. Huge. And the more proper, the better, but like just by working out. Why? Because once you start squatting properly, you learn how to hip hinge properly. So like you take a kid that has maybe that forward lean where their head and shoulders are over their toes and they're straight legged a little bit or knee knocked and stuff like that. Just a simple thing by spending a summer learning how to squat properly can change that because now you know what that feels like. So that's one, right? Uh, You learn how to hip hinge, you do single leg movements, like learning how to be strong on one leg to the other. You're going to get a lot of benefit from that. You're going to just start getting more, um, um, coordinated but stronger from one leg so you're going to be able to have more power when you skate jumping is a very similar movement to skating in many ways because you have an arm swing and all that kind of stuff um, and you get some now you're going to get some core strength but what this does is helps you generate strength I'm not saying the only thing is to weight lift but just by lifting weights now when you push off and you're getting a little bit stronger you got some hair on your on your body and you know testosterone and stuff now just that alone is going to make you a little bit faster and stronger, like generate force. So that to me is a big difference maker in itself. Um, the next one I would say would be um, plyos, doing plyometrics. So what does that mean? It's just, I'm not even being real specific here, but by doing plyometrics, you're teaching your mind body connection to be twitchy a little bit, being able to touch ground, generate force real quickly. So that's a good thing for your quick starts, maybe for your change of direction. Uh, and then another thing that a lot of people don't think about is just understanding your feet. 
right? Like if you go to, if you spend like a lot of the workouts, you have them going just from the balls of their feet to the starting and landing. And there's a reason for that because that's in that area is where you're generating a lot of your quickness from. And uh, that's how you be quick. That's how you, you, you have that quick turnover. Right. Yeah, for sure. So just one, I'll, one I'll add to that is the, uh, even just an aerobic base, like having a base where you're not going to be tired. Yeah. People don't understand. And I, I don't have to get to like the sciencey stuff, even about it for people to understand why it's important. It's very easy to understand. If you get tired, everything does not work. So before we even get into how much more efficient it makes your body, if you have a good, you have good aerobic metabolism, if that's a thing that is good for you, then we don't even have to go into that. Because that's, I mean, that's hugely beneficial, but without even going into that, if you get tired, everything stops working properly, everything. So you could have the best mechanics ever. If you gas out, then it doesn't matter. It's over. Yeah, hundred percent. So what what, will happen if you don't have a good aerobic base, what happens is you have to, you start leaning on your anaerobic ability, which is that more high intensity type of drive. And that's what, that's what taps your nervous system out where you start to be gassed. And if you are gassed, nothing works. So if you can stay in that aerobic area, because you have such a good base for a longer period of time, you can maintain good posture, good mechanics for longer. So there's a thing that you would never think like do those 5k runs we talked about, right? If you get really good at those and have a really good 5k time, I bet you that on the ice, it'll be a lot easier for you to focus on your skating and get become a better skater because you're not worried about being tired. Now you don't have to think about that. It's like, I'm, I'm good. My, my brain can be engaged because I'm not tired. And now I can think about how to be a better skater. So there's just a great example of like, you wouldn't even think of that. You wouldn't think that that is going to contribute to better skating, yeah. but it actually does. You yeah, know? for sure, man. The other thing would be just mobility. So why mobility? What does that mean? It's just being able to move your body properly. Like getting, getting uh, mobile hips, right? Being able to open up your hips and having a limber back, shoulders, core, and all those different things that just allows you to move more fluidly. If you can be mobile, you're more fluid. So if you have a body that's fluid when you go to skate, as long as you're not like a wet noodle, then your body will move the way it's supposed to move. But if it's if it's tight, like if you can just keep doing skating, 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 and, and you don't work loosening up your hips and stuff like that, your lower back, the thoracic spine, everything, then your body's going to be tight. You're never going to get that perfect stride, right? Um yeah, the body's more fluid and then you're strengthening your smaller muscles, right? So mobility is just those little small muscles that you know, like you said, no one ever heard about uh, and having them have good mobility makes a big difference. So now your, your body can just move freer on the ice, which is, which is uh, one thing. And then with that would be kind of yoga or uh, yeah, a Pilates or a good stretching routine or dynamic stretching is to be able to to have your body move in different ways. Yeah. And I, one example that I remember for myself was um, I never used to do dynamic warm ups before I would play. And I remember Ryan Donnelly actually was the first guy that ever showed me a dynamic warm up. Um, so I hadn't really implemented it, but no one was really showing me how to do dynamic warm ups. So I remember the one that Ryan showed me. And that was when I would have been when I was 15, 16 in my draft year. So I started doing it for myself. And I remember doing those A skips where you, you do like that high knee or high people have done high knees. A skip is like a high knee. Um, and I remember my, where my knee would get stuck. I'd get my knee to parallel and it would, that was it. So that knee drive, I was stuck right at parallel. If my knee was straight out, like perpendicular from my torso. And I remember over time vividly that all of a sudden my knees started shooting up where I could basically like knee myself in the chest now. And I remember thinking like, holy crap, like, what is going on here? And everything in those, like, so I'm not saying it's because I did a dynamic warm up alone, but I'm saying adding that into my regular routine of things that I'm doing to help myself, that was correlated perfectly with the time where I started to think, okay, I'm actually a fast skater now on the ice. Whereas before I was always like a mid pack, whatever. But I, once I hit my first year of junior, it's like I'm one of the fastest guys on my team. And I, I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's because I did knee drives alone, but that was one of the things that I didn't do on the ice. It was off the ice. I'm working on my knee drives. Right. So, yeah, it's a, it's a huge thing because that's what, you know, you want a longer stride. You can push it this way or you can drive it forward. Right. And if you have, if you haven't done mobility on your hips, then that knee drive, you never practice it yeah. and how powerful that is. And that's your twitchiness. Mm -hmm. Then you're not going to get it. 
then that's the, that's the other side that parents don't even think about parents people that are teaching skating even i mean I'm, i would hope most skating coaches know this but like the stride goes both ways like you're going out like you're saying to a full extension but if you can't drive your knee back as far as possible then you're not catching as much ice to push out the next time that's right so work working on that knee drive it's not yeah. just the stride out it's the recovery coming back that's yeah. equally as important it's half the stride yeah <laughs> right well 100 percent. yeah so like and the next thing i had would be would be track yeah. like if you look at the best most some of the most powerful quick specimens in the world are in the sprinters oh yeah 100 meters go, baby yeah 400 down. unit yeah. 400 down you yeah. got to go fast for a period of time so so why track like how that it's not skating that's what people would say it's not the same movement it doesn't have to be the same movement it's the principles of it or so what you're learning in it you're touching on a whole bunch of things so like the first thing you ever do in a track workout is mobility and it's really good my mobility so, and there's dynamic mobility so you know like track coaches will teach you to uh, like right away if that hip is not driving and you can't hold a posture properly so there's another thing posture where you're not compensating then you can't fire properly and then it's about learning how to land on your feet again it's like you understand your feet so like there's all these different things so it's just you take that principle it's not exactly skating but there's there's crossover stuff right it teaches you how to be you, you're not running a 100 meter dash very well if you don't have an explosive start so are you on an edge no but there's ways to manipulate that into hockey it's about turning it over quick generating as much force as possible you can learn that in track right it's again fluidity you know sprinters cannot be very good sprinters if they're uptight they're yeah, tight. rigid yeah they're, you can't be rigid you have to have that loose upper body your body will learn how to how to just flow together it'll have a coordination upper and lower body right and uh understand your feet understand your posture so my point to all this is that you can take all this stuff if you're touching on, you know, you don't have to do them all, but try some other different aspects of it and just watch. And I've had good success with just a few people that have actually been listening and they've called and they said, I can't believe it. He, so my son wasn't on the ice for three weeks. I, I, I was, I was freaking out. I was freaking out, Andy. And I just listened to you. And he went back and he was looked really, really good. And I go, I know. So that, that's my point is that it doesn't have to be straight skating it's all these other things to make you more fluid, make you more flexible, make you more powerful, make you more twitchy, to make you more mobile. And 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 then when you go to your now, now what it's saying is your body is just going to move properly yeah. instead of skate pro, like because you've just tried to trade the skating pattern. It's like it's almost like I think it's 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 tough. Well, yeah, and, and the like the body moves even like different body types move slightly differently, but your your body is going to move in a certain way. And if you don't understand the way that it moves optimally, then you're going to be at a disadvantage. And the other like little hidden benefit with this is if you, by doing other things, maybe you, maybe you get a really good strength coach that can explain hip hinging to you properly. And now it's not, it's not necessarily the same degree of hip hinge you're doing as you are in the gym, but you can apply that line of thinking to your skating stride, you know? the forward lean of doing knee drives in the gym. It's like, oh yeah, this is actually the position I skate in. You know, that's why you run hills. It's like this, it's a similar angle, you know? So if you get somebody in a, whatever, whatever the environment is, it could be in a strength training environment or at the track or whatever. And they just can explain things to you where you start to understand your body to your point. Now you can apply those strategies on the ice, even if it's not the same exact movement pattern that you're training, because I'm I'm a believer that specific specificity is the most important thing to train with as you get older. You know, you have to be training specifically for a certain thing to get the best result. I believe that. But that doesn't mean that all this other stuff can't still be true, right? Where you pick up on things from different coaches and different styles and now you can bring them to where your actual training environment is and apply it, right? Yeah. Well, so I just you take that into a skill session, right? Like, you know, I was talking to my kid the other day and we're doing some pretty cool pretty good stuff but he goes hey dad you notice like how, how much i'm embracing my type of play and i said yeah i said but what, what do you mean he goes you notice like when i'm getting around a guy all i care about i don't care about how the puck is getting there i i put it through him and i use my body and i use my power so that i get in that habit of doing it instead of trying to be like because i'm not i'm not what's the who's this not Connor mcdavid yeah, mcdavid death he's got to do it a different chickies. way and i said yeah. that's good that you can put that in play 
in perspective, like work on the things that are going to make you better, right? And that's like the specific specificity that you were just talking about. It's like you got to make it your own, right? Because no, like it'll be people will clap if he gets a, or people will be excited if he gets a couple goals where he's using his hands and he deeks people of his jocks. But consistently, he's gonna he's gonna get his points or play well by playing a heavy game, right? Yeah. So like, anyways, you're gonna say something. Well, I want I want to talk about the coaching part of it. I I, I don't want to go out of order though. So if you, if you want to run through what you got there first. Well, yeah. So I, I want to I, like. So this is what I, I really want to say is like, I would say if you can put a ratio together, I don't know if I want to do that, but I would say definitely work skating. If you have, if you're, if you like to go to power skating, that's like good, whether it's a figure skater, or a good power skating coach. If it's the guy that just does all kinds of edges all day or you're on, come on in buddy. Uh, if, if, if you want to go on one knee and slide on one knee and whatever all that stuff is, that's, it's all good. But I would say that that stuff's going to come, or you'll be better at that stuff if you do the other stuff. You know what I mean? So I, I, I thank you, buddy. So I, I would say I would strongly, strongly suggest you try that. It's not going to hurt you to be a good athlete off the ice. And I would say you could actually trust me on this one. So, um, so having said that, um, because I, I do kind of, I, I even a lot of skills coaches, I, I, I to your word, poo poo them. Because I, I know I know how a lot of people do teach and stuff, and it's like, come on, man. But what I what I would want to say is like, this is why I do think power skating is important, or or a coach that spends time on skating, it's important, is because a lot of the times, especially with hockey players, if you take the pucks off, or if you keep the pucks on the ice, they're staring at the pucks and they just want to touch those pucks and shoot the pucks, and they're focused on when are we going to do a drill, when are we going to shoot. So if you can take time, and whatever whatever intervals that you think is appropriate for your team or for yourself is get on the ice and just focus on skating. Because what that what that allows you to do is just be is focus on skating and embrace it and try to learn. What I like about power skating coaches as well is that you actually just don't know the one little thing that might make a huge difference. So like I would I I I my one of my questions is always you know how does how, figure skating coaches skate so different than hockey players in my opinion. I'm not saying I'm right. So I, I always wonder, like, how does it translate? They're always in a edge work and, you know, arms out and stuff like that. But what if you went and reluctantly the teacher or the, the skating coach said, well, this because of this and this is how you're going to accelerate out of turns or whatever or how you're going to open up your hips for pivots. Now you're good. You can be 10 and 2s all day if you want. And if that's the one thing you got of, you went, oh, okay, great. So that's why I, I – no, I really like – like it could be as simple as, yeah, you're turning shit because – you you you're leading with your body instead of your head. Like if you snap your head, your body follows. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, okay, now work on it. You've made some improvements, right? But taking everything else that you've done with it, now your body is just used to doing things that are you know you can adapt to that very quickly. Um, of course, you can always work on on uh, with coaches. Coaches, you just being in that correct posture when you're skating and working on the proper balance and doing it at different speeds, your extensions and your glides is critical. So I would never say to someone, just go and uh, don't ever go to power skating. Don't ever go to a skating coach. Just go and do track, track and mobility work. And you're going to be fine. Uh, that's not what I, uh, I want to reiterate that. I think there's really good to do power skating. But I, I think the game changer is doing other stuff and adding power skating into it. Where I think a lot of people do skating as the number one. Yeah, prioritize adding, that. Yeah, right. prioritizing is the word. Yeah. And adding a mobility workout once right. a week or whatever. It's right. like, I think it should be flipped. I would agree. I think you see a huge, huge difference. I, I would agree, particularly the younger age ages. Because as you get older, to me, like if I, so if I'm a professional hockey player now and I need, uh, there's a pr- particular skating deficiency, I would prioritize that over, say, my strength work because it's like I'm basically strong. Like I'm, I don't need to get stronger. This is exactly. Right? Yeah. So it's again, it's, it's kind of what I mentioned last week about graduating your mindset. Like as you go through the years and we're, when we talk, we normally default to those younger ages up to the end of junior because that's most of our audience. But that doesn't mean when you get older, things don't change. Like things start to change as you get older, right? So with that context in mind, that that's, I would agree. Like you're, you're starting off with, uh, you don't need the emphasis to be on just power skating. As you get older, you can start to emphasize just power skating, provided it's specific to the thing you need, you know? So that, that's the, the caveat I'll throw on, on that one. Yeah. So like, so now like I was just looking at, well, like, what are your needs? 
This is really important to understand because if you go do power skating and you're already like super powerful, it's like, are you benefiting from it? But like, here's like, just this. I just put this off the top of my head just this second. So what are your needs? Is it pivoting? Okay. So what's, what are the things you can do? Go on the ice and which is good. Trust me. It's good to learn how to pivot and ride that edge, open up the hips and push. Well, what else can you do? You can go mobility work. You can do yoga. And that's going to take care of a lot of pivoting itself, yeah. right? Uh, if you if you do, uh, that'd be like minimizing uh, crossovers as a defenseman. So that that would go hand in hand. Turning would be kind of mobility, uh, power, coordination, core, core, uh, quickness. Well, you can go on the ice and do the same thing you always done and try to do it faster, quicker, shorter steps. Longer step. I don't know. You know, you might think this is going to make me quicker, but you might be doing something bad or not necessarily productive uh, as fast as you can, and it's not really helping you. Whereas you can do. So I'm where I was like quickness. Uh, but what if you went and learned how to get a quick start from like you're doing sprints with a track coach, and all of a sudden you just learned how to be faster out of the gates. And maybe you're not taking three steps. Maybe it's only one now. Or maybe because you went to the gym, that first step is good now. Just say, what if you're weak? Yeah. Yeah. What you just see weak? what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, so now you apply that and then do your quickness drills and resistance drills, your top end speed. So that's, again, it could be sprinting. It could be learning how to move your body quicker. Maybe it's working out to drop some body fat, like different things like that. Maybe it's being your, your top end power is going to be because you are more mobile now and more fluid. And then, like, and then you go on the ice and do that. Uh, decelerating speed, which people don't really pay attention to, but that's the, being able to change directions real quickly, either laterally or uh, stopping and going the other way. Well, decelerating decelerating speed is from lifting, right? Being having a strong body and a strong core, so that when you know, like if you're if you're squatting uh, just a number two hundred pounds and you're dropping and coming up as fast as you can, that's one way to work out. But if you just do the the eccentric or the concentric, concentric, no, no, eccentric and isometric, isometric. Yeah, I lost it there. <laughs> and you hold that in that decelerated, like stop the when you're stopping the uh, weights from moving, you're building that decelerating speed. It's jumping off of bounces or boxes and not just folding. It's being able to hold that with you know with with. Uh, like basically your athletic stance without dropping right yeah actually that's so, an interesting point i want to touch on the decelerating thing so if you do things like so what you're talking about is going with that if you have a tempo to your lift where it's like you drop for two seconds pause for two seconds and then shoot or whatever so that drop part is the eccentric so if you're lowering a weight or your length it's actually length whenever you're lengthening a muscle that would be the eccentric portion so by going slow, you're actually building eccentric strength. So you can handle heavy loads because you're dropping it nice and slowly. What that will translate to if you condition it afterwards is you can slow down really fast, if that makes sense, yeah. right? So, so to hear my words, because that could be confusing, you can slow down faster, which is important because if I need to change direction, it's not just my takeoff speed that is important. It's how fast can I slow down? If it takes me an extra second to slow down than I need to, then that's really affecting my speed, right? Now you look slow. So even if your takeoff speed is great, if it takes you a long time to slow down, then that's also an issue. You know, so the eccentric thing, like that's another thing where people just wouldn't, people don't know that or they wouldn't think of that as a, as a criteria for being a better skater, but it is, it's very important because hockey's constant change direction, constantly. Yeah. You know? So if we go with it, if we go with skating, make sure you're a better skater, then, then, then if you wanted to, oh, okay, I'm going to work on, changing directions quite quick i'm going to work on that decelerating it's like the question now is do you really think that going on the ice skating really fast to let's say the blue or red line slamming the brakes on and changing directions is the way to do it because your body will learn how to do that if you do a good plyo if you get in the track and do change direction drills and learning how to rotate your core properly. And, and I mean, there's a way to do it on the ice as well, but this is what I, I'm saying is like, if you can change that direction quick off the ice and then you go on the ice and you are, you're a good skater and stuff, you can apply that. But just and, loading the movement. Yeah. Like 
you go, it doesn't matter how much you try to slow down fast on the ice. You're never going to be as strong as doing it under load. The load is what gets you the adaptation, right? So if you don't ever have the adaptation part of it, then you can only do so much in the on ice setting, right? Yeah. So it's, it's really important. But, to, but, but you can only do so much. And then also if you, if, if it's like, like, so this is my point of this whole thing is that if you've only done it through skating, you are limiting what your body is able to do anything anyways. Right. So you're, you're, you're working in one pattern all the time, I guess. And that's why I'm like, like these little things, all, or I, I wouldn't call them little, I would just call them very important things um, are, are a whole bunch of things that can make a huge huge difference in your skating whereas you and and to me the benefit of that is that yes maybe you have to pay for a speed coach on the track let's say or a fitness trainer stuff um but you don't have to but it's i in my from what i can tell anyways is it's a lot uh it's a lot cheaper than renting the ice for yourself to get your own specific needs with a coach and the ice rates and stuff so that's what i'm saying is like I, if you take time and spend it in other places and spend some time doing it and then touch it on the ice, I really, really believe you're going to get a better benefit. And then as you said, as you get older, I'm a defenseman and I need to work on these, these hips and pivoting and stuff. And I've got all that other stuff. Now I can actually be really good yeah. at it. Yeah. And even just to the point of having to pay for stuff too, it's like back to, we talked about be resourceful. It's like, if you can't afford it, like go on YouTube, man, and get, get a, speed coach for free on youtube yeah, where they'll, try it. they're not going to be able to dissect nope. you personally but nope. you, i'm sure you'll learn a lot just from paying attention to what they're saying if you haven't done that before yeah. you know what i mean right yeah so so that's that's kind of like my thoughts on this and my thing is is like there's so many ways to do this and it's like and the other side is just you know sometimes learn to think and i'm not saying i have all the answers but a lot of the times, like it's my experience that I've seen with players. Um, and here's the thing, right? This is a, this is a tr- very true statement. It was all in one day. Talk to five scouts, NHL scouts, talking about a player's um, w- quickness. They all basically said the same thing: is quickness. One scout said, "If I was him, I would stay away from the ice totally, totally." With within reason, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like right. you're gonna totally do your, totally. you're gonna do. But yeah. he but he said like try to stay off as much as you can, and just do yoga. He goes just get your body to be fluid, yeah. and this is so this is an NHL scout telling me this. Okay, so is he right? I don't know. But why does Nick Suzuki go almost every day? Good skater. It, it might be one way that works. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that and then I had another one. So you just got to get this kid with a skating coach and skate, 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 skate. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> so that's one, that's another. Yeah. Exactly. So this is where, and so, and then I had in between with that. Yeah. Right. And one was like, oh, they're fine. He's going to be, he's going to be fine. Uh, you know, and one said something like that he's going to grow into that body, this, that, the other thing. But my point to that is that you have to think on your own because if you just take one person's opinion, that might be the wrong answer. So it has to make sense to you. Like if you truly believe that being on the ice every day, cause there's, there's kids that ask me and they just can't believe that I'm saying, don't come on the ice for a while or only come out twice a week or three times a week in June. And they look and they just can't buy it. They just can't do it. And the parents can't do it. And it's like, if that's what you believe, then that's what you believe. And maybe it works for you, but I, I firmly believe there's other ways to get, become a better skater. You had questions or comments. Well, I wanted I want to take like maybe five minutes or so and just rip on coaches for <laughs> a bit. If you can hang with me for five minutes to talk about no, it. No, I'm not in a rush to go, man. Oh, okay. it's, it's so, the guy watching. So I, I'm I want to rip on coaches for like five minutes, and I'm going to rip on myself included as a coach. So I'm not just picking on other people. And just the caveats before I say this is, as the, a skating coach or as a skills instructor, as a trainer, you can blanket this for any trainer person. I'm not saying that you need to know all the information because I'll be the first one to say like, I'm not the best off ice coach that exists. There are people that have like oceans of knowledge more than me about the best ways to train off the ice for sure. But one thing that I pride myself on trying to do is making kids understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. Very important. And there are times where I don't do it and I know I'm not doing it. 
and I see I could have done it and I didn't. And it might be I'm a person, so I'm tired today. It might be that my my mind is thinking of something else and I'm not totally engaged in the session that I'm in. It might be four of the I've, five. Four of the five guys don't really care, would, so you don't want exactly to exactly what I was. Gonna, that was my next one. I was yeah, gonna be like, sorry, I, no, no. I was literally gonna say like I've told this kid a hundred times and he doesn't listen, so I'm not gonna try again because he's pissing me off now. So I'm not excluding myself from the ripping that I'm about to give all of us. When it comes to power skating, if you want to have an effective program, you need to have buy-in from your guys that are there. So there's a couple different ways that this can go. So I'll try to keep it like pretty generic and then you can ask questions if you want to. But there are certain things that are going to be effective and certain things that aren't. So we were talking to one guy and he was talking about their team skating coach. And he was saying like, I can't stand this guy. And not only, not just him, most of the kids on the team can't stand this guy, right? So as we always do, I'm asking why? Why do you not like your coach? Why do you not like this guy that's doing the skating stuff with you? And the answer that I get is like, like I just don't know why we're doing the thing we're doing. Like we do it and it's like, hey man, like this is stupid. I don't know how this applies, whatever. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you are the skating coach, it is your job that people are hiring you to address their deficiencies. Now there's a couple issues with this. One is if you have 20 guys on the ice, then how are you going to isolate individual issues? Because guarantee everyone has a different issue on that, on that ice. So if you're in the one-on-one -on -one setting, then it's easy. Very important that you're actually, you're specifically addressing what the kid has an issue with. So for you, for example, that you had a kid come out, you assessed what his problems were, you addressed, like, let's say it was turning, like you were mentioning before, like, okay, we're going to hone in on turning and I'm going to explain to you how to turn, why to turn, why what you're doing doesn't work, why this other thing will work better. Here's five things you can try and we're going to grill it in a progression over time because that's how programs work. Progress over time. That's the only way it's going to work. You can't keep doing the same drill. It's got to be like progression, right? So that's one thing. If you have 20 guys on the ice, you can't do that. You still have to be able to explain why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, you have to change your way of yeah, coaching. right? So yeah. it's like, okay, one of the big issues I have personally with power skating stuff is everything is su super generic. So if I come on the ice and I'm really good at my forward to backwards stuff and you're like, okay, we're going to do forward to backwards. I'm like, man, right away I'm, I'm checking out because I'm like, I already am good at this. Like, I don't, I don't want to work on this. And maybe that's my fault as a player. Fair enough. But regardless no but that's that's the audience that's the like audience when you're the coach exactly and you're the and, and you're the uh you're the coach or the instructor it's like that's who pays your bills yes like if you're the coach you say no you different what i mean by that is if you're a coach and you're saying this is how we're going to play and this is what we're doing then you got to do it right but if you're actually selling it or you want buy-in it's much much better to explain or to give them a reason to be engaged. Yes. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because at the start of the podcast, you were talking about players. You ask, what did you do? Do you yeah. feel like it's helping you? And yeah. there's no answers. There's no answers. Yeah, there's, there, there, there's sometimes that's yes. If you ask why it's like, I just feel comfortable and that's an answer, but it's like, they're very, very vague. Yes. Very vague. So they don't know. My point is they don't understand and maybe they weren't listening, but let's say, we're going to put the onus on the adult coach person. You need to explain and make sure they understand why they're doing the thing they're doing. So if you're running a generic skills session for skating for a team, obviously you can't address individual deficiencies. So at the start of that session, it, sh it should be like, okay, guys, today we're going to just touch a little bit of everything because you guys haven't had a skating session in six weeks. And I just want to make sure you guys are touching you're going to touch your edges again. You're going to touch all your turns. You're going to touch your long strides. You're going to touch your good posture. We're going to put your sticks down for a bit. I know that's not how you play hockey, but I just want you guys thinking about your blades right now. And now it's easier as a player to buy into that. It's easier to be like, okay, I still don't like this, but at least I get why I'm doing it. Like I'm trying to refresh myself on this stuff. You know, if you're doing a session once a week and you're always doing the same thing every week, your guys are going to tune out, man. There's no progression to that. So even if you are doing something beneficial, there's no adaptation to happen because you're not doing the progressive overload type thing that you would do in the gym, right? You're not applying that. So kids are going to start to tune out. So if you couple that with bad communication, it's just a recipe for disaster. And the problem that I see with a lot, a lot of coaches, and it's not because I personally watch the coaches. It's because I talk to the players. Same as you. It's like, I'm asking the players because maybe if I sit one-on-one -on -one with, with the coach, they can explain it. But 
if you're not translating that message to your players in whatever, if it's skating for this example, then your program is not effective. It will not be good. And then that's where you and I will get frustrated where you can say like, okay, you, you keep going to the skating coach. Now all you're doing is getting tired and taking resources away from other things that would actually be more beneficial for you right now. You know? So that's my, my little rant for, for coaches because it's a real point of frustration that kids don't necessarily know better and they're going and paying money or their parents are going and paying money for a coach that can't articulate it to them. Because if they did, when I asked them a question, they would have a clue about what they learned. I'm not expecting them to go into the deep body mechanics in their answer, but they should be able to say, oh yeah, like my turns are really weak. So we were working on leading with that break foot or whatever it is that we're, we're working on, on my turns. You know what I mean? Or yeah, he was saying that my, my chest is way over my toes when I'm skating. So I'm trying to get my, my upper body posture to be in a better position and get my hip hinge better or whatever it is. And that you just don't hear that when you talk to the kids about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's crazy to me, man. Like thing is, is like, you don't have to give the, like, well, I shouldn't say that. I, 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 I have always said this to you. Like if you are charging money, like this is not a well, it's a coach, but it's a skating coach or a skills coach. It's like if you're charging money, I my opinion, you shouldn't be charging one dollar if you're not the best. I know that's a, a weird statement, but that's how I look at it. It's like if I don't think I can go in, if you plunk me in Chicago right now or Moscow, Russia or Los Angeles, California, if you don't think that you can go there and give whatever player that pick a player. I will be able to help them in some way. Like I've got, you know, and if you can't do that, you shouldn't be charging, but that's people do. But the results are what I got the other day when the five guys came out, right? That was yesterday. That's the beginning of the story. This is the end of the story. So when the one boy came out and then he said, well, the dad said, can I bring a couple guys? And they were awesome guys. So again, my my son was out with them again. They really wanted to learn. I understand why they really wanted to learn. Because they were actually freaking learning, right? We just didn't do drills, and it was like, okay, next, next, next. And we stopped every single one. And there was five on the ice, which is not a huge group. But I said, okay, good good there. Get under your feet. You're outside your feet. Here's why, why. And we went down the thing. And then Charlie was would go to them and say, pick them apart too. So every time they did something, they were getting feedback. And it was like, oh, and this will make me better because, because, because. There was, there was one, one of the kids that was on the ice that's um, we're talking 15 years old and i get this a lot i got I had this with an ohl guy to believe it or not um uh, but this guy this guy went is with a uh, skating coach not all the time but with them if you didn't address this so this this kid was turning a really nice skater and then when we did a tight turn basically guys if you can see this your edges are if i put you on flat that's how you glide if i tilt them you're on your edges so if you go into a turn and you tilt both edges and only edge and get on your heels. That's what this kid this kid was doing, which is very, very common for people because you got to kind of sit back. So what happens is you carve that ice. You leave chunks about this wide on the ice for about six miles long. If you go and turn with any speed whatsoever, only using your edges and your back edge and to pull, pull your toes up, it will. you could turn a Titanic, the Titanic quicker than you could turn your body on the ice. So I explained that and they go, oh, well, like, what do I do? So I was explaining. So some people use the term punch turns, which means you, you use a break and stop. That's what it is. So your inside foot, if I'm turning right, you're going to use like a outside edge stop and throw your hips around, pushing with your edge on your left leg, and then you can go. And it was like, they all said it. Oh, we've never heard that. Be- we've never heard that before. I said, you're 15 years old. And you have no idea what, what, what I'm talking about. And you've had skating and coaches. You, and that's my point yeah. is you've had skating coaches and you've never heard that. That's a shame. That's a shame. You So basically, whether you gave this person $1 or $5,000, you have wasted your time. And that's, as coaches, that's where you, the angle you have to come from. You have to be able to help. You know, there's a guy watching the other day. I was finishing up on a drill. I think he was blown away. Because uh, um, I was just doing a, a pucks off the wall, which seems simple. So it was coming like an offensive puck off the wall, and they had to come off the wall and then get it drive the net with a shot. So he was he was watching for about five minutes, and he and and I gave about 
from every kid, I gave them something else. It was like the shooting. It was the skating. It was the turning. It was the punching. It was creating space. And it was, and, and I could see his face just going, what the hell? That's actually teaching. And that's, I'm not saying that's what an, every coach should be doing, but that's, if you're paying someone, that's what you should be expecting. Period, man. Period. And I, unfortunately, that's not really what it is. And that's where coaches, if, coaches and parents, you got to seek out the right people. There's a lot of junk out there. Not, I'm not trying to be the negative guy, but we're talking about it. No, and it's, it's just there's a lot of junk. And it's it's just garbage. It's, even even for me, boy, like I try to pride myself on the why stuff and the explaining and whatever. And it's like even for me, like I I not even for me, just you know what I mean. It's easy to just not pay, get in the flow. Like you're just running your sessions, right? And it's easy to not address the thing or not address the whatever. And I guarantee, you, like for some of the younger guys in the gym, at least, if you ask them certain things that I'm doing in the gym, they couldn't explain it. They wouldn't have a good answer, right? But I know that they all have a clue about what's going on because I, I make it a point to invest the time, not just to talk to them about workout stuff, but to just get to know them so they want to listen so that I get the buy-in that I'm talking about. You know, So I think it's really important for, for coaches or whoever's in that position where you're trying to help. I, I cannot stress enough how important that is if you want what you're doing to actually be effective. You know, On top of all the other stuff we talked about today, like that is the key to success is getting the buy-in from whoever it is you're trying to teach because if you don't get it then everything you're doing doesn't matter you yeah. know what i mean yeah so. well and i'll tell you man like i said with those new kids never met them before and it was like they were so appreciative and yeah. i didn't I, i'm telling you right now i covered basics nothing out of the ordinary yeah it was not rocket science whatsoever but it was actually someone took the time to say if you do this this will be better and here's why and here's how they couldn't be happier and I told them, like I said, I can't skate the way I used to skate. I'm 54 years old. I didn't, you know, I'm not even the same guy. Like, but they were like, I was like their best friend. And they they come in after, hey, thank you so much, coach. I don't know these kids. They could have just said, here's your money. Thanks. Yeah, see you, bud. See you next week. But like, it's a big, big difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think that it kind of covers all of it. I mean, again, like we said at the start, just kind of wanted to have the discussion. We're not poo-pooing anything for the third time. This not podcast. at all, man. Not but just all. asking some some basic questions and hopefully trying to clarify some of that for people because it's hard to know what's good, what's not good, like we've talked about before. Um, but I think that's a good good spot to, to stop. So I want to leave it there. See you, Justin. Uh, yeah, 100%. Okay. Yeah, we're Sweet. good. We're good. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>